Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'll start a new opening series today and it will be on the Pirates uh, defense, which is a hyper-modern opening and uh, a bit different to the stuff I've been covering so far. Uh, so the Pirates, uh, often mispronounced as Perk or in Croatian Pircevka, uh, was named after Vasya Pirts, a Slovenian grandmaster, Yugoslavian grandmaster. So it should be called the Pirates defense because he wasn't uh, Vasya Perk. Uh, anyway, it's a hypermodern opening in which after e4, black plays the move d6. Now, this is quite uh, quite a quiet move and uh, black is basically giving up uh, the center to white and black uh, agrees to play in a hypermodern fashion where he allows white to create a strong center and then crashes through it afterwards if he plays correctly. Now, you are going to see that the opening bears a lot of resemblance uh, with the king's Indian defense and with the Benoni in some cases, so uh, all three have a similar idea of fianchettoing the bishop for black and striking through at white center with c5 and e5. So what black is basically doing after the move e4, d6 and white's normal continuation d4 taking the center, uh, black hopes to develop his minor pieces, castle his king and then break open the white center. Now, what white should do in response to this is simply oblige, create a strong center at, and try to keep it afterwards. Now, this will only be an introduction to the Pirts. I'm going to cover each variation you can see on the screen in detail in a separate video, and we are going to go over all the important lines. And here I'm going to try to give you the basic ideas behind the opening and just uh, show you what each side can play. Now, the good news for White uh, against the Pirts is that he gets to decide what type of game they are going to play. And very often, uh, White is the one, the one who can decide whether it will be tactical, whether it will be positional, and what types of position will arise from the game. Now, the normal move after d4 is knight to f6, and White plays knight to c, knight to c3 here. Uh, the move f3 has been seen. And uh, this is called the lion defense now, this actually transposes, but it could also transpose into the 150 attack, which is the Pirts once again. So uh, f3 is, is a straight sideline, so if you play the Pirts with the black pieces, you need to be pre prepared for this as well. I'm going to go over it in the 150 attack video, so on that variation, because it bears a lot of resemblance to it. But as I said, after d4, knight to f6, the, the main way to defend your pawn is with the knight, so knight to c3. And here, uh, black uh, enters the normal peers defense with the move g6. I would like to mention one move briefly, which uh, actually transposes to the Philidor defense. And if you play e4 and you face the peers often, then you must have faced this move, and that's the move e5. And this, uh, if white misplays it, leads to an endgame in which black is perfectly fine, I would argue even slightly better, if you get tempted and take the pawn, so d takes e5, d5, queen d8, king d8. This is uh, almost an improved Berlin for black, because his c pawns aren't doubled, he's actually challenging uh, the, the e-file with his e5 pawn. And this is completely equal, the fact that uh, black can't castle doesn't mean absolutely uh, anything, and black is going to play c6, king to c7, develop normally and have a fine game. So this sideline with e5 should be uh, met uh, with knight to f3 simply declining, and now you have entered the Philidor defense after knight bd7, bishop c4, bishop e7, etc. And I'm going to cover this in in detail in the Philidor uh, series, this is the lion variation, but as I said, uh, don't be surprised if you enter this position. So after e4, the Pirates with d6, d4, knight f6, knight to c3, black doesn't have to play the main move g6, black can go for e5. And just remember not to take this pawn because the resulting endgame doesn't give white almost any advantage. And by the way, sorry, I'm just moving into a new apartment, so the recording setup is quite strange and I have a lot of stuff around, so I couldn't find the normal table. But anyway, uh, let's get going. So after knight to c3, black plays g6. And as I said, black's idea is to allow white to create a strong center and then to fianchetto his bishop, castle his king, and open up the center, most commonly with c5, but with e5 as well. And uh, hypermodern hyper opening's... Uh, haven't been popular really uh, up until the 20th century. Uh, the Pirates has been played in the 19th century, but with uh, varying success, not really that much success. And in the 1960s, uh, it became uh, popular and played commonly. Now, 
Uh, Bobby Fischer played it once against Boris Paski in their 1972 match. Game 17 ended in a draw. And there are quite a lot of popular uh, strong grandmaster games which you can check out. So the first thing I would advise you to do is to look at 10 or 20 games just to have uh, get a feel for the position. Now, as I said, uh, White gets to decide what the opening will be like. White has uh, six moves here, perhaps even more, but... but Almost all other moves apart from the these six are quite dubious. And from these six moves, two are the, the most popular, two are the main lines. The move f4 is the Austrian attack, and the move knight to f3 is the classical variation. Those two are the best for white, and those two are objectively the strongest way for white uh, to play. Now, they are completely different. Uh, the move f4 is tactical, leads to very sharp posi positions in which White is going to attack as soon as possible. And the move knight to f3, the classical variation, uh, with this move, white is going for a slow, steady uh, advantage, which, w and in these positions, black can hardly equalize if, if white plays correctly. So I think that uh, people who play the Pirates defense uh, hope for f4 and something aggressive because that gives them more chances because the Pirates is a fighting opening. And if you dampen then their counterplay with now knight to f3, which knight to f3 does perfectly, then players with black, especially lower rated ones, often get confused and find their, their pieces cramped on the on the back row. So imagine the bishop being here, the king castle, uh, the bishop either goes here or here, the knight goes to d7. So all of black pe black's pieces are stuck on the first three rows and white can expand normally and almost create a perfect chess setup. Bishop e3, bishop d3, castle, queen to d2, rook to d1, rook to e1. And you have a position uh, as if it came from a textbook, while uh, on the other hand, black is cramped uh, on, on the back row and still has to find some counterplay. Uh, the other lines which I'm going to go over are bishop to e3, which is a very, very, very aggressive setup, and uh, c6 is the main move for black here. White goes for d2. Uh, this is the so-called 150 attack. I have no idea why is it called that, and it's quite an unimaginative name, but still. And this setup basically is uh, something like the Yugoslav attack, uh, and white is going to play f3, castle long, play g4, h4, sec, sec, mate, uh, the Bobby Fischer method, and... I have to say this is one of my favorite ways to fight the peer, def the peer defense. Uh, another line which is quite popular is bishop to g5. Uh, this is the burn variation, uh, named uh, after burn, uh, an American grandmaster. And this I wouldn't recommend because I think this is... Uh, well, your bishop is going to end up on g3, and uh, I can't really see a big advantage for white after bishop g7 queen to d2, h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3. I mean, black has sort of overextended his pawns on the king side, and it's going to be much harder to castle. But still, I, I think that you need your bishop on e3, and uh, I would prefer to, to play other lines. Uh, one very interesting way, way for white to play is the move g3, uh, the Sveshnikov system. And this doesn't really copy black's plan, because... Uh, even though both sides are going to fianchetto their bishops, uh, white still has a broad center, and one, white can sometimes even continue with the move f4 and uh, cramp black, black's position down. Uh, so after bishop g7, bishop g2 castles, knight g2, e2, uh, e5, h3, uh, this position is quite playable for white, and I like it. It's, it's unusual, and most people who play the Pierce defense aren't going to be uh, used to this. And the last variation we are going to go over... Uh, is bishop to c4, and uh, this is the Kolmov system, and even though it's been played uh, a long time ago, it's sort of a new idea to develop the bishop to c4, because uh, normally the bishop goes to e2 and then to c4 in some lines, but this is a very aggressive setup uh, with which white could uh, have quick wins, and uh, the bishop is of course much better on c4 than on e2. So let's say bishop g7, queen to e2, uh, knight c6, e5, opening up the center, knight d7, knight f3. You can see that black is sort of forced to go back, and white has a free hand in the center. And as in every chess opening, white isn't much better or anything, but if black is uncareful, then he could get in trouble much faster than white, because white has more space, white has more activity, and white's king is in, uh, in, at the end safer, because there aren't no uh, black pieces around it. So these, all of these six, we are going to go over in separate videos. So the, the series is going to be six, uh, six videos. Uh, and let me just go back to this position. So uh, 
Uh, the Pierce defense is, well, myself as an E4 player, I like to face it because I think that uh, black can go wrong uh, much sooner than white can. Of course, if white isn't if white isn't careful, then he could blunder. And uh, several strong grandmasters have played it. I would want to name Yasser Seiravan in particular, who's played it uh, for a long time, and you can check out a lot of his games. He brought uh, numerous ideas to the theory of the Pirates. And his games are very instructive, and you should check out his games to see how to play this with the black pieces. And uh, nevertheless, I prefer the position for white. Let's just go over uh, some of the main lines. So f4, the Austrian attack, with the idea of basically bringing another defender to the center, so the, the move e5 can be played, but it doesn't work. And in the Austrian attack, one thing you have to remember is that once black plays the move e5, your general plan is to take with one pawn and then advance the other. You should never take twice. So after e5, let's say e5 here, even though it's not the best move, you either take here, or after e5, you take here. So let's say this happens. So in the Austrian attack, uh, you basically want to uh, be able to uh, move one of your pawns forward, and that's why you use the, thir the third pawn. And it's the most aggressive setup against the Pirates. So Black's most common move is bishop, bishop to g7. Uh, the move e5 here for white isn't really as dangerous. White continues with knight to f3, Black castles, bishop to d3, and white develop his develops his pieces before going to an attack. Uh, knight to a6 is played instead of knight to c6, because this could be uh, an annoying tempo, the, the move d5. Castles, c5, and here you can see what black is trying to do in the pirates. Black has developed, black has castled, and now he's trying to undermine the center. And the only way for white to keep his to keep his center is to play the move d5. If white captures on c5, knight takes c5 is actually fine for black, and uh, white doesn't have a huge advantage at all. So white has to play for an attack d5, trying to keep those pieces at bay. And now let's say bishop to g4, which is the main move, and white's idea is ideally to exchange this main defender in black's position and to advance the pawns when the position is favorable and when you get when you manage to get an attack out of your advancing pawns in the classical system the story is quite different and uh, this is probably my second favorite system against the Pirates. I usually play the 150 attack with bishop e3, queen d2. But knight to f3 is the most solid way to play. And this is... Uh, I'm not sure what is the main line now. f4 and uh, knight to f3 have both been played thousands of times in Grandmaster games, I think about equally. But knight to f3 is the most solid way. Bishop to g7, bishop to e2. As I said, you don't go to c4. Sometimes you do it later, but you need your bishop here because bishop to g4 is... Uh, is an annoying move. Castles. And uh, here already you need to be prepared for sidelines. And there's a variation which I really don't like facing. I have played this against uh, a Fide master about a year ago or two years ago. He played c5 here immediately, mm -hmm. opening up the center before I got time to castle. I took and he played queen to a5 and he's going to recapture here with the uh, with the queen, you, you really have to be careful. If if I try to be greedy or something, then after this move, my position is just losing. You can see that black has a lot of tricks in the pirts, and uh, you need to be careful from the start of the game. So let's say knight to f3, bishop g7, bishop to e2, c5 is already possible here, and you need to be prepared for that. So the pirts is an opening in which black tries to lure you into his trap. Uh, he tries to put his king to safety and then break through your center immediately. But the main uh, the main move isn't c5, it can happen, but castles, castles, c6 here, and black is trying to develop, create a small center and then opening, open it up later. c5 is possible here as well, d5 is the main move. So in most cases, when c5 is played, you need to close the position down. Now, ideally, you would like to do that in a way that it blocks down this bishop, which is really hard to do. So black has significant counterplay, but yeah, you need to be prepared to have nerves of steel with both sides here, um, especially with, with the black pieces, because uh, if you get scared uh, while playing the pirates, if you panic, if you move your pieces backwards uh, before it's necessary, then you are going to have a losing position. For example, in the, in the Austrian attack after f4, bishop g7, knight to f3, castles, uh, here I would play bishop to d3, and one of my opponents moved his knight backwards, fearing e5. I've actually had, uh, in blitz games, uh, 
after knight to f3, my opponents moving their knight backwards. So you need to know when uh, you have to move backwards and when you don't have to retreat when the position is fine. And uh, in that respect, the Pirts is a very complicated opening, and I hope I'm going to be able to explain all the variations thoroughly and in a way uh, in which you can understand them. And I'm looking forward to that. Once again, a very complex, complex hyper-modern opening, very popular nowadays. And even though you won't see it uh, in every 2800 game or in World Championships, uh, it's still a very viable defense for black. And if white doesn't know what he's doing, and if white is expecting something normal, such as e5 or c5, then the move d6 can, can be a very strong surprise weapon. Now, one thing I would like to mention is that um, after e4, there's a defense very similar to the Pirts, and that's the move g6, which is the modern defense. And now after d4, uh, bishop to g7, knight to f3, uh, d6, uh, you might think that this is the same as the Pirts, even though some people classify it as the Pirts' modern defense. The modern is also known as the Robach. Uh, the modern defense is basically when black delays the development of the knight to be able to counter uh, the move e5 better and to have more options available for him. So we are going to cover the Robach or the modern defense in a separate series because uh, they are a different opening. Uh, okay, everybody, um, I hope you got something from this video, uh, from this introductory video on the Pirates defense. Uh, it's going to be six more videos with six main variations. Please do let me know what you think. Let me know if you want uh, some other variations to be covered, some sidelines which you think are important. I might include them. And uh, thanks very much. Thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to continue the series on the Pirates defense with one of the best attacking setups for white, the 150 attack. Uh, the 150 attack is a very simple idea uh, to battle the, the Pirates and it sort of goes against the, the, the main idea of the, of the opening and it prevents black from uh, creating his usual setup with g6, bishop g7 and breaking through with c5 or e5 and that's what makes it a wonderful weapon because uh, most players who play the Pirates defense uh, will feel uncomfortable outside of their normal opening setups. So after e4, pawn to d6 the Pirates defense, we already discussed this, uh, a Pir the Pirates is a hyper modern opening which uh, doesn't take uh, take up the center for black, but allows white to create a broad center himself. And black prepares to fianchetto his bishop with bishop to g7, castle short, and then either play e5 or c5 to break open white's newly created center. White accepts d4, knight to f6, attacking d4 pawn. The best move for white is to defend with knight to c3. And here black plays g6. We've already been over the Austrian attack with f4 and knight to f3, which is the classical variation. And today we are going to go over one attacking setup, which uh, is probably the most unusual way to play against the Pirates and the only one that's uh, very different to than, than all the other variations. And that's uh, the 150 attack. And the 150 attack goes for the setup, which is often seen in the Sicilian defense for white where white plays bishop to e3, queen to d2, castles long. And this, uh, these moves are going to be played in the 150 attack every game if you manage, uh, manage to play them. And if you've managed, it means you've su succeeded. Now, uh, playing this is sort of like playing against the dragon Sicilian, uh, but without the c-pawn uh, not being exchanged for the d-pawn. And you can uh, see that the same plan should work here too. So white has uh, a very simple idea of castling queenside and going for a kingside attack. Usually uh, white is going to play f3 to support the move g4 and to prevent any of black's pieces from entering the g4 square. And he's going to have a setup with pawns like this. Uh, his king castled long and his queen and bishop on these two squares striking at this diagonal. So this is what white is trying to do. This is the 150 attack. Uh, and that's what it's called in the Pierce defense. It is also called the English attack and the Yugoslav attack, uh, which are similar. And it's basically the same setup. The only, different, the, the only difference is that uh, you play the English attack or the Yugoslav attack against black's defenses in which he is prepared for that. In the Pierce, black doesn't really want to... Uh, get out of his comfort zone. Uh, 
Okay, so the move g6, and black starts the 150 attack with playing bishop to e3. Uh, here, black uh, has only one move, and that's the move c6, because black needs to create queenside counterplay. Black's plan is c6, b5, trying to create a queenside attack before white can get an, uh, white can get a free hand on the king side and on the queen side. A very common mistake which we are going to see is black continuing with his normal plan, with bishop to g7, and basically what, what black is trying to do against the 150 attack is to delay putting his bishop to g7 to make this attack less strong and uh, if the bishop isn't, isn't on g7 then the move bishop to h6 isn't a good move and uh, black will want to de delay that as much as possible now a very common mistake as i said bishop to g7 and here white simply continues with queen to d2 uh, black should now continue with c6 but if he castles uh, let's see let's see this first so c6 is the main move here even though you've white isn't that much better or anything white has a slight advantage but he has a very simple plan bishop h6 the best move is to take you can also castle but it basically comes down to the same thing bishop takes queen takes e5 now opening up the center and this is very risky for black you can see that if after bishop h6 black castles then takes takes and h4 i mean it's it's so simple that you really don't have to think about your moves. You're going to play f3, g4, or you're simply going to play h5, knight h5 takes. Let's say black plays e5 here. h5 takes, takes, takes. You have already made attack. I mean, you can castle here and a free hand on the king side. So playing bishop to g7 is a bad move because, not because the game is lost, but because you are giving white a simple attacking plan. So bishop to g7 should be delayed. And that's usually considered a, considered a mistake in this system because uh, white has already given up his hand, sort of, and white told you what he's going to do. So white, why play into white's advantages? So don't play bishop to e7, uh, to g7. After bishop to e3, the main move is c6, trying to get pressure on the queen side. Ironically, uh, the engines prefer bishop to g7, by the, but they don't really understand how humans feel when they are getting attacked. So I would recommend you don't play this, because it's going to be really hard to defend. After c6, uh, white simply continues with queen to d2. There is one more move. Uh, and that is the move h3 after c6. And h3 is sort of designed to pr uh, to provoke the move bishop to g7, and then you can continue with, the no with your normal plan. But black should just ignore the move uh, h3 and continue with knight b to d7. After knight b to d7, the main move is knight to f3. You, I'm sorry. You can also play f4, but knight to f3 is better. Uh, queen c7, a4, preventing b5. Bishop g7 now. Queen to d2 castles, bishop h6, and you have the same position, but black has uh, sort of gained the tempo because white played h3, which is useful in some positions, but not really that much here. And the other thing is that once white has played uh, a4 and knight to f3, then he can no longer get this setup because the, the pawn is a liability and you can't play f3, so the, the attack doesn't really work anymore. And this line with h3 is called the sveshnikov Yansa attack, and uh, I wouldn't recommend that because it's a, it's a weird combination of a few openings for white, and I just like straightforward play more. So after c6, continue with queen to d2, going for your normal plan, even though the bishop isn't... Uh, on, on g7 yet black has to play b5 here that's the that's the best move uh gaining space on the queen side preparing to fianchetto his queen side bishop and put pressure along this diagonal uh, here once again if after queen to d2 black plays bishop to g7 then bishop h6 in, and white is much better uh, black can either castle or take once again and you get the same position so after queen to d2 b5 uh, another move after queen to d2 is knight b to d7 that's a sideline which black could opt to play, but I, I prefer the move b5 because it's more aggressive and I think it's much more precise. Uh, after knight b to d7, white can continue either with the f4, getting a sort of Austrian attack setup, uh, and after bishop to g7 you have transposed to the Austrian attack, or you can conti continue with knight to f3 and sort of play for the classical variation, but with uh, white, with black having played c6, which makes c5 uh, sort of a waste of one tempo. So black is going to play e5, you are going to castle long, queen e7, h3, bishop g7, bishop h6, castles, bishop takes, king takes. You're going for, it, for the same idea, but as I said, it's slightly weaker uh, because you don't have the f3 pawn here, it's going to be harder to push through with g4, h4. So after knight b to d7, 
white is okay and uh, I think that b5 is a more precise move but knight to b7 uh, knight b to d7 is playable as well so black might consider this uh, anyway after knight b to d7 I wouldn't recommend going for the classical I would recommend the move f4 because it's just much more aggressive and e5 here isn't possible so we are basically asking black to play the move c5 which is going to be weaker because he already play, played pawn to c6 and you can even consider knight f3 bishop to e2 castle or knight f3 bishop to d3 castle or you can castle long so you have a lot of options in your position while on the other hand black is basically forced to play bishop g7 castle short so after knight bd7, either going for a classical setup or an Austrian attack setup, I would recommend the Austrian attack setup. But uh, after queen to d2, this move isn't the main move, b5 is the main move, and b5 should be played. Uh, here white can continue in two different ways, and this is basically where the 150 attack branches out. There are two approaches to the position, one is less aggressive and another is much more aggressive. And the other is much more aggressive and I would recommend the more aggressive one. Uh, the main move here is bishop to d3. Uh, that is the less aggressive move. Developing your pieces in a normal fashion, you're going to play knight to f3 and have a safe position castling short. And uh, well, I think that isn't as good. After bishop d3, knight bd7, knight f3, e5, uh, castles, bishop b7, d e5, d e5, a4, this is the main move, and the engines will always like white, but don't be uh, fooled by that, black isn't uh, much worse or anything. Uh, the main move here is a6, uh, if after a4 black plays b4, this move isn't so good because uh, white can continue with knight to e2, and after c5, uh, defending the pawn, white can play knight to g3. Uh, transferring his knight into the attack even even though these two squares are taken away now after queen to c7 which is the best move you have bishop to to b5 provoking the move uh, a6 and if black doesn't play it your bishop is too annoying so a6 and you get your bishop into c4 and you can see that b4 weakened a lot of light squares and your bishop sort of has uh, has much more scope than had black not played b4 so after the move a4 the most common way for black to continue is a6 and after a b c b this is the starting position of the main line of the 150 attack and uh, I will turn on the engine just so that you can see the evaluation. Uh, it's plus one for white but it's nothing major and uh, it's not really clear what, what white is doing with this bishop in this line because it's really cramped in and it doesn't have any squares. d4 pawn is a liability. Uh, the dark squared bishop is okay, uh, putting a lot of pressure on black's position, but in this setup, once this happens, uh, bishop h6 isn't really that strong because you don't have an attack, and uh, this bishop is a monster now. And this is why I believe that the move bishop to d3, even though white in theory has a better position, isn't that strong because you don't have a simple plan of attack. A much better continuation after, uh, let's go over the opening moves again, so bishop to e3, the first move after g6, bishop to e3 going for the 150 attack, uh, well, black continues with c6, as we said, not bishop to g7, queen to d2, preparing your attack, b5, here we looked at bishop to d3, and I would recommend another move, simply creating your, your normal attacking setup, preparing for g4, h4, and that's the move f3. You don't really have to think about it too much, and once you have created this pawn chain, and you have this setup with your queenside pawns intact, you can castle long, and you can attack. And you don't you don't even you don't even have to castle yet. You can simply attack the black king. You have to you have to know that the black king is on e8, and it's a couple of moves away from castling, and you you have a much faster attack. Knight b to d7 is the main move. Uh, once again, if bishop to g7, then bishop to h6, and white now pushes forward g4. Uh, the best move is knight to b6 uh, to make sure you have created a square for your other knight to make sure it doesn't have to go to g8 which would be ridiculous. So knight b6, h4, preparing the move h5 or, h5 or the move g5. a5 is the main move for black and now h5, b4, knight to d1 and this isn't really a problem, your knight is fine here. You can either play b3, knight b2, knight c4 and get your bishop to c4 after an exchange or you can play your knight you can play your knight, and I've played this in real game, knight f2, knight h3, knight to g5, and this is a great attacking piece. Uh, so after knight to d1, this is much better for white. If I turned on the engine now, this is almost one and a half. Uh, so bishop to g7, that's the ma main move for black, believe it or not, even though it looks very risky. a3 now, uh, trying to prevent black for, from expanding too much. 
takes rook takes, g h5, uh, g5 is the main move. Knight f to d7 using the uh, freed up square with the knight going to b6. And now rook takes h5. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to have white here? What's the problem with this position? The engines love it. I, I as a human player, think it's much better. And I'm not sure if you asked 100 people who would rather have black here, that maybe one of them would say black, but I'm not sure even about that. And this is just a great attacking position for white. Uh, black here uh, continues with d5. That's the best move. And the main move here is just to keep the tension and uh, reroute your bishop around to, to the g3 square. But I prefer the move e5. I think it's much better because you block out the bishop. And now a4 by, by, by black trying to expand on the queen side. And once again, a very safe position for white. Uh, black can't really do much to prevent f4, f5. Uh, black can't really do much to prevent a move such as queen to h2, putting pressure on the h7 pawn and just black is going a pawn down. And as I said, there's always a plan of rerouting this knight into the attack. Now you have a perfect square on, on g4 and... A move such as knight f2, knight g4, and even here sacrificing, getting your queen here, would be devastating for black. And from here on, you could find a lot of attacking plans for white. On the other hand, show me an attacking plan for black. Uh, it's really hard to find one. Okay, um, let's go over the opening moves once again. So e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, bishop e3, c6, the best move for black. Once again, if bishop to g7, then you play queen to d2. Black played the perfect move for you, a mistake. c6, queen d2, b5. I would recommend f3. I think that's the best move. Knight b to d7, g4, creating an attack. And uh, I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you one game. Wait, uh, from which position? Uh, okay, let me go back uh, here. Okay, yeah, I wanted to show you one game from this position, which uh, Judith Polgar played against Jan Timan in 98. Uh, wait. Okay, uh, so Judith Polgar has the white pieces and uh, Jan Timan has the black pieces. Of course, Judith is uh, rated... In 98, in 98, she was rated 2700, so she was very strong. Uh, Jan Timan played the main move here, knight b to d7. Uh, and Judith Polgar went for the move d5, which is another interesting idea. And uh, instead of the move g4, you could attack in the center as well. And I'm not really sure that the move d5 is precise, because you allow white, uh, you allow black to get the, the c5 square and the e5 square, which could come in handy for him. But she played the move d5. And now we have bishop to b7. Uh, he didn't take. dc6. Bishop c6. Knight takes b5. Uh, winning a pawn. Uh, bishop g7. Knight to d4. Attacking the bishop. Bishop b7. Bishop b5. Pinning the knight. Castles. Knight g2. a6. Bishop c6. You can see that uh, this is much more active for white. This bishop is dampened. It has no scope on the diagonal. White is going to castle. And white can in fact castle both sides. It's safer to castle short. But... Uh, she could have castled long as well. Uh, queen c8 here, bishop b7, queen b7, knight b3, and white's position is just safe. I mean, the only problem is this Peart's defense bishop, which is very strong, but I suppose that a move such as c3 could slow it down, but it, it, it isn't really necessary. d5 here by black, e d5, knight d5, bishop d4, challenging the bishop and simply exchanging black's best piece. And now, uh, if you count the material, uh, Judith Polgar is still a pawn up and she went on to, to win safely. So, in this position after f3, uh, it's quite hard for, for black to defend after knight b to d7. g4 is the main move, but white has played several things. Uh, d5, which Judith Polgar played, has only been played 36 times. Uh, bishop d3 has been played, uh, h4 has been played, knight g2 e2 has been played, a4 has been played, castle long. I mean, all of these moves are playable, so once you get this position, and it's very likely that you are going to get it because it's the main line, the only difference is that white chose to play f3 instead of bishop to d3, you have a free hand in the attack, and I just love it. I, I think there isn't that much uh, player a player with the black pieces could do to prevent you getting this setup. So d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, bishop e3, c6, uh, queen d2, b5, f3. There you have it. If black plays knight b to d7, which is by far the best move, now you choose. You either play g4, you play h4, you play d5, you can even castle. I mean, a wonderful position. Uh, okay, uh, 
Thanks very much uh, for watching. I hope you like this video on the 150 attack. I hope you got an idea how to crush the Pirates defense now and uh, let me know how it goes. Let me know if you've played this uh, against the Pirates and uh, stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. With this video I'm going to finish the series on the Pirates defense. And I have decided to combine two systems into one video because they are simpler than the other variations we have looked at already. And today I'm going to go over uh, two very interesting sidelines for white and two very interesting weapons white could use against the Pierce defense. One is the Sveshnikov system and uh, the other one is the Kolmov system. And both have a lot of venom, especially the bishop to c4 line in which white could get a very aggressive attack very early on and it, include, it includes uh, an explosive queen sacrifice we are going to look over that and i hope these two are going to serve as uh, great weapons for you to fight the hyper modern pirts so let's get going e4 d6 the pirts d4 taking up the center white's most principled response when you're facing a hyper modern opening such as the king's indian or the pirts uh, then just accept and take up the center. Black's idea is to fianchetto and uh, castle his king kingside, and your idea is to take up the center and allow or not allow white, uh, not allow black to break it up afterwards with the move c5 or e5. But once d6 is played, d4 is the most principled move. Knight to f6, attacking your e4 pawn, knight c3 defending g6, and this is our starting position. We have looked at the 150 attack with bishop to e3, queen to d2 and preparing to exchange the bishop on g7. We have looked at f4, the Austrian attack, the most aggressive way for white to play. And we have also looked at the burn variation with bishop to g5 and at the uh, line with knight to f3, which is called the classical pirts. Today we are going to go over two uh, less popular openings, but uh, venomous nonetheless. The first one I wanted to go over is g3 the Sveshnikov system, called uh, named after Evgeny Sveshnikov, a very strong grandmaster uh, who is still playing. And uh, with this move, your idea is to do something similar to what Black is doing, to fianchetto your bishop on g2, castle and uh, attack. Now, uh, the difference is that while Black has only developed his pawn to d6, you already have a broad pawn center. So after bishop to g2, the move f4 will bring your third pawn to the center, in some positions and allow you to have much more space while black is going to be cramped. So this Sveshnikov system, the G3 line, is a very interesting way to counter the hyper-modern uh, principles because you are combining the two systems. You are going for the classical and for the, for the hyper-modern uh, style of chess. And this is an opening which combines the King's Indian attack, uh, the Reti, and uh, probably the Queen's Indian or the Catalan in the d4 lines, and it's a very interesting way to play. The next few moves are forced, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, knight g2, you don't really want to go to, to f3 because you want to keep the option of f4 and you want to defend your d4 pawn, and black has to play e5. This is his best move and he has to challenge the center as soon as possible. If black doesn't challenge the center, uh, then white will stand slightly better. I wanted to show you just one move here after castles, if f4, this is slightly too risky and you want to develop your knight first and castle, uh, this might backfire. So after uh, bishop to g2 castles, develop your knight first, allow the move uh, e5, and now you have three options. Uh, the most common move is h3, uh, stopping any of black pieces from coming into the g4 square. Uh, the second move is castles, this is uh, the second most common move, and there's an engine line which nobody really plays, which I quite like, and that's the move d5. And uh, if you're playing this line against a stronger opponent, then the move d5 might be a great choice, because nobody will really be prepared for this, because there's no such games in the live book, only two games with this move, and about... 1500 games with h3 and 500 with castles. So d5 is a very strong continuation. What you are doing with the move d5 is uh, blocking out the g7 bishop in the most natural way, taking up space in the center, uh, sort of putting the brakes on c5. Uh, c6 is still possible, undermining your center this way, but d5 is, is a great move. And black should continue with c6, undermine the center. Bishop to e3, c d5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5. What you have here 
Uh, if you have seen my last, uh, uh, next to last middle game video, you should check it out and uh, it's on the backward pawn. In this position you have a backward pawn to exploit and uh, the d6 pawn is as if this were the Sicilian defense. Black has expanded with e5 and he has a clear target on d6, thus the move queen takes d5 was played because when you are playing against backward pawn, against the backward pawn, the first thing you want to do is to fix it, blockade it, prevent it from moving forward, use up the square in front of the pawn, this is what you will most commonly get out of the Sicilian defense, so the d5 square, and then put pressure on it afterwards. Now I'm not saying that it's easy to pressure this pawn, but if you imagine playing rook d1, rook d2, rook uh, fd1, uh, knight c3, knight d5, uh, and getting your queen into b3, then the pawn is blockaded and easily targeted. Combine that with the moves f4, ef4, bishop f4, and you already have four attackers on the pawn. So this pawn could, in theory, be, be rounded up. Black continues with knight c6, queen to d2, bishop to e6, uh, and black has to fight for the control of d5 and prevent... Uh, prevent white from entering this square. Now, the ideal Morozzi bind setup uh, can hardly be achieved here because you are relinquishing control of d4 and of b4. So a plan such as b3, c4 might be too slow. Even though ideally you would want to achieve b3, c4, knight c3, knight d5 and fight black this way. So this is a plan of attack, but you need to be careful because black has his moves too. So here the main idea is to castle. Rook to c8, b3, firstly blunting this bishop, secondly uh, going for c4, but black doesn't have to allow that, black has to play b5. Rook a to c1, queen d7, knight c3, looking at the d5 square, knight to d4, and here, uh, well, the main idea is actually to give up the bishop. I have tried to make different things work, but this knight is just too strong, so you need to take that, e d4. Knight to e2, you don't really go into this square now, because once you take your pawn is going to be a liability, and here you are attacking the d4 pawn twice, and black has an aggressive way to exchange d5, e5 is the best move, bishop e5, knight d4, and here you have at the start of the opening. Now, uh, I actually don't like... Uh, white as much in this position the engines will, will tell you that it's equal but from a human perspective you have a backwards uh, you have a backward c2 pawn which is going to be slightly hard to dissolve with the, to dissolve with the move d uh, with the move c4 uh, you have given black the bishop pair which might be dangerous in some positions and uh, you don't have a clear plan of attack so d5 the engine line even though it's uh, Great for white, uh, if black plays correctly, then he could he could be fine. But after c6, bishop e3, c d5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, if you do manage to exploit the backward pawn, then you are going to be great. After knight c6, queen d2, bishop e6, uh, you might want to try the move b3 now, but once again b5 is going to come and then you can castle. But as I said, after castles here, rook c8, b3, if black doesn't play the move b5, let's say black plays rook e8, then after c4 your position is amazing. And this position just went from equal to winning for white in theory, because once you manage to get your knight into, into d5, then you have no problems. You're basically playing against this bad bishop and there is no way for black to do anything about it, because your queen and bishop are controlling h6. So this would be a perfect example of a good knight versus bad bishop position. So the d5 line has a lot of venom, definitely. Now let's go back. Uh, g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, knight g2, e2, e5, uh, let's go over castles, the second most popular move. Knight c6, d e5, knight e5, f4. This is your idea behind the opening. You want to expand with f4, you want to put pressure on black's king side, and as in every variation of the peer's defense, as white, you are trying to create attacking chances and not allow black his activity breaking up the center and taking over the initiative. Uh, knight c6 is the best move, h3, uh, a key move preventing pieces from entering the g4 square, and h3 is going to be played in almost every variation uh, of this system, of the Sveshnikov system. Rook e8, a3, now slightly passive moves, queen d3, h5, bishop to e3. This is the, the start of the opening, and uh, this is the second most popular line. Now, once again, uh, 
in the Pierce defense, uh, keep your eye out for the moves e5 and f5. If, if, if you can make one of these two work, that means that you are opening up the kingside and attacking. Uh, I would, however, advise you not to play the move castles because it's uh, not as good as the main move or as d5. So after the move e5, I would advise, advise either d5 or the main move h3, which we are going to look over now. So once again, preventing the pieces from entering here. Black continues with knight c6 or with c6, but c6, a4 preventing b5, a5 castle, cd4, knight d4, knight bd7 is slightly better for white because uh, the c6 pawn is a liability and b5 can almost never be played. And this diagonal is weak, which players with black aren't really used to in the pirts. Any move such as e5 will now put pressure here on the c6 pawn. So I would recommend that after h3, black continues with knight to c6, keeping this diagonal closed. Bishop to e3, e d4, knight d4, bishop to d7, castles. There you have it. Your plan is going to be f4, attacking once again, but you haven't allowed uh, black expansion expansion too early, uh, such as with the move uh, with the move castles. And I, I think that this is a favorable continuation for white. Uh, unlike many other variations of the Pirts, the engines think black is fine here, so the engines disagree with the plan of g3 bishop to g2, but you're playing humans and you're playing humans who are used to their own systems and uh, I don't have a lot of experience in chess, but what I've learned thus far is that people who play certain openings always play these openings and they are comfortable in their own systems and if you face a Pirts defense player and you create this setup, he isn't going to know what to do, and you are. So even though the engines think this isn't plus 0.7, but it's all zeros, it might be easier for humans to win this position than the mainline classical. Rook e8, rook to e1, a6, a4 preventing b5. This is a key thing you, you need to remember. Whenever black plays a6 or c6, you want to counter that with a4, stopping b5. Knight b4, putting pressure on your c2 pawn. Queen d2, c5. Black expands and goes for his counterplay. And this is the reason why the engines don't like this move, because as you can see, as opposed to other variations in the Pirts, white doesn't have a strong center. This resembles uh, the Philidor somewhat, and uh, it's slightly more passive. But uh, that's what I wanted to say about the Sveshnikov system. Now, now let's look at uh, the Kolmov system. After the move g6, uh, the move bishop to c4 is... It's not a new idea, it's it's new in top chess and uh, it hasn't been played that much. Now, most often in the Pirates, your bishop is going to, to go either to e2 or to d3. And uh, bishop to c4 is a much more aggressive move looking at the f7 pawn. And in many positions, if the f6 knight moves, you are going to have uh, huge attacking pressure and tactical possibilities. So if you're a tactical player, uh, a tactical e4 player, if you play against the Pirts, this might be the system for you. Uh, now, the general plan of attack is remove the f6 knight. That's, that's the main idea. Once you remove the f6 knight, uh, possibilities arise. Bishop to g7, the main move. Queen to e2, developing. Knight to c6, and now here is the, the key thing. This is now move 5. So knight c3, g6, bishop c4, bishop g7, queen to e2, knight to c6 is always going to be played. It, it's, it's the best move and it's looking at the d4 pawn. Now you get to choose. Here you have a passive move and you have uh, an active move. The passive move is knight f3, defending the pawn and bishop to g4 pins your knight. So you need to play bishop to e3, castles, castles, e5, d5, knight e5, bishop b3. This is a fine variation. White is slightly, slightly better. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. However, after the move knight to c6, uh, the, the key, key, key idea in the Kolmov system is the move e5. And uh, I have to say, this is one of my favorite lines in the Pirts. And I've never gotten this on the board, unfortunately, but I hope I, I will. And here, the key move is e5. Now, uh, you're probably wondering what about knight takes d4. Uh, let me just show you that the main move here is knight to d7. What you're doing with knight to d7, you're forcing the knight back. You're opening up your strong c4 bishop to the f7 square. And you have sort of achieved what you wanted. And here you have uh, two amazing lines. I, I just, I'm very excited about this opening. Uh, the main move for white here is knight to f3. 
and after knight b6, bishop b3, castles h3, you're sort of giving black time to, to retreat. Okay, let's not look at knight to f3 anymore, even though this is the main line. After knight to d7, uh, there's a, a great move here, which the engines don't approve of, but it's almost equal, so there's nothing wrong with it. And that's the move, bishop takes f7. The point of the Kolmov system, the strong c4 bishop, as in the Italian uh, opening, and you have to use it now. So, uh, let's try to calculate before we take. What happens if bishop f7? Uh, bishop f7, king f7, you have to move e6. So it's not really a sacrifice, you can win your piece back. And the question is, what do you get? Uh, you get the black king in the center, and you get the initiative. So why would anybody play knight to f3? Bishop takes f7. Uh, you have to take. There's nothing better but to take if you play king to f8 than e6 and... Pff, horrible. King f7, e6 check, king to g8, e d7, bishop d7, bishop to e3. Once again, the engines will say that this is slightly better for black, but I can't uh, disagree more. White is about to castle queenside, and white is about to play knight f3, knight g5, h4, get the knight into e6 if he can. Just a great position. Uh, this is the sacrifice which you need to remember. So this is on move 7, on move 7. So bishop c4, the Kolmov system. Bishop g7, queen e2, knight c6, e5. If black plays the main move, knight to d7, remember bishop takes f7, king f7, e6 check, king g8, e d7, bishop d7, bishop to e3, develop normally, create an attack. Black is going to have a hard time getting this rook out. Of course, this pawn is hanging, but that's completely irrelevant. Black doesn't have time to take that. And now let's look at the most tempting move. After e5, knight takes d4. Okay, and uh, I'm hoping to get this on the board one day and I probably will because I'm planning to play uh, the Kolmov system against the Pirates the next time I play uh, against the Pirates in a tournament game so uh, here your queen is attacked you just lost the pawn uh, what do you do you sacrifice your queen e takes f6 you took one knight knight takes e2 you're a queen down f takes g7 black can't really save his knight he has to react to this Rook to g8, and now knight g takes e2. Count the material. Black has two rooks, a bishop, and a queen. White has two rooks, a bishop, and three pieces. Who is better here? Uh, materially, uh, since black has eight pawns, white has seven, uh, the material is equal. If I turned on the engine, uh, the engine is going to say that black is better, but... The engine doesn't uh, really know how to assess this position yet, and the engine is going to change his mind. Uh, the main move here is for black to capture the pawn. So now black has two pawns. Bishop to h6, chasing the rook away. Rook to g8, and now castles. Uh, now tell me, would you rather have black or white here? I would always rather have white. I don't care what the engine says. I have three pieces for the queen. And I have the initiative. All of my pieces are developed. The last thing I need to do is get my rook to, rook to e1. And I'm going to be much better here. This piece isn't playing. Uh, and it's not going to play for a lot of moves. This piece isn't playing. It's doing some defensive, du defensive duties, but not really. Uh, the queen is the only semi-active piece. This, this bishop as well, but they aren't really doing anything. And the white is very quick to play knight f4. Knight d4, knight to d5, bishop takes f7, rook to e1, rook takes d6. There are tons of possibilities. Uh, black here continues with c6, preparing to blunt the bishop with d5. And after rook h to e1, uh, d5 changes the evaluation. So uh, the engine firstly at first thinks that d5 is the best move, blocking out the bishop. But once you play d5, it changes its, its mind and it gives the position as plus one and a half for white. So d5 might be a mistake, there are better defenses, but who would play this move? I mean, this just looks too scary. Uh, I, I would never play this. And white still has a lot of pressure, black hasn't done anything. So I think that most people are going to play the move d5, and now look at this. After d5, uh, let me turn off the engine. d5, knight f4, uh, the, the pawn is pinned, you, you can't do that. 
bishop to g4 is the main move. Uh, if you take dc4, which seems to be better according to the engines, then rook takes d8, king d8, rook d1 check, bishop d7, knight e4. We don't have to talk about this variation. So after rook h to e1, d5, knight f4, bishop g4, here's a great move. Uh, knight f takes d5. The black, black can't take the rook because this is mate in one. Uh, bishop takes d1, knight f6, checkmate. So after knight f takes d5, uh, check out this evaluation, plus 5. The, there's, the engines don't really understand this sacrifice, and I love this sacrifice. I would just... I think that humans could rarely defend this, and even grandmasters would have a rough time. So let's go over the, the moves once again. So bishop to c4, the Kolmov system. Bishop g7 has to be played, queen e2, the best move, knight c6, e5. You're hoping black will take the pawn. And uh, don't listen to the engines. This is hard to defend. Uh, once again, if black plays knight to d7, you sacrifice your bishop, you play e6, win your piece back. If black takes here, then ef6, sack your queen. Here, here, here. Okay? Uh, sorry. Takes, takes. Bishop tempo on the rook. Castle. c6. Rook here. If d5, you know what to do. Uh, knight to f4, and I just love this position. I think that, uh, that this variation, the Kolmov system, is something so underrated and that it will gain in popularity, and especially in Blitz chess, this is a wonderful variation to play. Uh, once again, I, I hope to get this on the board, and I, I think I will very soon. Uh, so these were the two openings I wanted to cover to finish the series on the Pirts. Uh, the next opening is going to be the Modern, which is uh, uh, the younger brother of the Pirts defense. I'm going to cover that in a few videos, and then we are moving on. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked these two uh, variations for, for white. Let me know if you plan to use them. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to continue the series on the Pierce defense with the Burn variation. Uh, a variation of the Pierce defense introduced by Robert Eugene Byrne, an American grandmaster who was very active in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. And he contributed a lot to American chess, of course. He, he competed in nine Olympiads. He was the world championship can candidate in 74, so a very strong player. He also had uh, a weaker brother, Donald Byrne, who was an international master, so two very strong brothers. <clears throat> anyway, the Byrne variation is a sideline which you have to know as black if you, pay, if you play the Pierce defense. And if you play e4, then it might be a good weapon in your repertoire against the Pierce. Uh, so after e4, uh, d6 the Pierce defense, d4 knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn. Knight to c3, g6. Uh, I'm not going to go over the basics of the opening too much. Uh, if you haven't seen the, the introductory video, please do, to make sure you can grasp all the basics. And today we are going to focus on the move bishop to g5, which is the burn variation. Now, not every book or every database calls this the burn variation, but it is the most common name. And uh, the idea behind this move is basically si uh, similar to bishop to e3 lines, in which white is preparing to play queen to d2, and preparing to exchange the bishop on the h6 square. However, the move bishop to g5 has some upsides and downsides when compared to the 150 attack. If you haven't seen that video, you can see that too, because it's a slightly more flexible line in which white, to aims, uh, white aims to castle queenside. After the move bishop to g5, black's position is under some pressure. Uh, white isn't really ever threatening to take the f6 knight, because you don't want to get rid of your bishop. But white is developing quickly and going for the same plan of attack, forming a sort of uh, Yugoslav uh, attack formation with which you want to castle queenside and uh, have a kingside attack. And as with all hypermodern openings, black is trying to fianchetto his bishop, castle kingside, put his pieces to safety, and then break open the center. Now, black's most common plans here are to delay developing the bishop to g7, because if you develop your bishop to g7 too early, then queen to d2, and this plan might work, and if you manage to exchange the bishop on g7, then you got rid of black's main defender. So black's main plan is to play c6, 
b5, queen to a5 and b4. Not uh, necessarily in that order, but your idea is to put pressure on white's queen side to dislodge the knight from c3, force it to go either to d1 or to e2, sorry, oh, or to e2, and then to, uh, then to expand your pawn chain. And there are a couple of moves that black can try here. Uh, the main move is still bishop to g7, even though c6 is considered more flexible. So I would recommend the move c6, but bishop to g7 is the main line. And black can also play the move h6 or simply uh, develop with knight b to d7, which is always a good move and you are going to play it eventually. So it's a solid continuation, sort of ignoring white's... Uh, White's move bishop to g5, and sometimes it's a good idea to ignore what your opponent is doing seemingly and try to get him out of his prep and out of his comfort zone. So let lo let's look at c6 first. Uh, c6, uh, preparing the move b5 as soon as possible. White con continues with queen to d2, supporting your bishop, getting ready for bishop h6 uh, if the bishop is developed to g7, and getting ready to castle queen side. And if black continues in the most principled way, expanding on the queen side, then white might just be deterred from doing that, and white might end up castling king side, which is actually the main line here. So black should uh, always continue with b5. Don't waste any time developing, just try to punish white for doing uh, this. b5, threatening to remove the knight. <coughs> Sorry, bishop to d3. Now b4 immediately... Uh, might not be such a good idea, sometimes threat is stronger than the execution, so threatening to remove this knight might be stronger, so just develop. Knight b to d7, and here white has a choice, and if you've seen the video on the 150 attack, then you know that uh, in positions like these, when black has expanded with c6 and b5, and your queen is on d2, your bishop is on e3, in this case on g5, you can either play the move f4, or you can play the move knight to f3, uh, deciding what sort of setup you want to create. My preferred <coughs> method is always to play f4 before knight to f3, because then I get to develop my knight and have a strong pawn center, sort of a combination uh, between the classical system and the Austrian attack. So f4 should be uh, the, the best move here. <coughs> bishop to g7. Now, of course, bishop h6 isn't possible. White plays knight to f3, both sides castle. Now, in this position, the engines will, will always tell you that white is better, and visually... I would definitely agree. Uh, white is, uh, well, the, the, the development is equal. Once black develops his bishop on b7, then the development is going to be completely equal. But white has more space in the center. White has these three strong central pawns. And white has three very strong moves at his disposal, uh, which he could choose from if the situation is favorable. The main move, of course, visually, is the move e5 removing this knight and blocking out this bishop as same same as in the austrian attack and in many other variations of the pierce if you can block out this bishop if you can dampen its influence on the long diagonal then your bishop is going to be much better so there are prospects of these three moves so either d5 e5 or uh, or f5 when the situation is favorable uh, black here continues with b6 influencing the center with his knight and preparing if the move e5 comes to put his other knight to d7. Rook a to e1, developing normally. b4. And now uh, both moves have been played. Uh, I think that uh, knight to d1 is a better move because getting your knight around here is a good idea in the attack. And uh, this knight is much more helpful than if it should come here because h4, h5 seems a long way away in this position. So knight to d1 would be my preferred move. And now black's uh, most active response is c5, trying to break open the center. Knight to f2, you just ignore that, you can recapture. c4, bishop to e2, a5. And uh, after a5, uh, you could argue whether black has overextended or achieved the spatial advantage on the queen side. I actually like black's pawn structure and... In any endgame, these pawns are going to be closer to queening. It does, however, relinquish a lot of central control once you move your pawn to c4, because now this pawn is no longer challenging these three, and white is going to have an easier time in the center. Hence, uh, white plays the move d5 here. Uh, closing down the position, preparing to play the move e5 if, uh, if needed, perhaps playing c3, bc, uh, uh, bc, and getting this, this strong outpost for the knight. So... 
As engines, I prefer white here because white has more space and an easier plan of attack. Uh, here, black should continue with h6 and now bishop to h4. Uh, g5 isn't possible. You don't really want to exchange this bishop yet because the knight is awkward and this is the starting position of the c6 line. Uh, I think everybody would prefer white here. It's not so much better for white. It's not winning, but I think... Uh, this square in particular and this square as a weakness are the main points in, in black's position which you can exploit. Uh, a maneuver such as knight to d4, knight to c6 immediately might be good, uh, perhaps provoking to exchange this bishop. Uh, you might even want to put pressure on the c4 pawn by fixing it and trying to remaneuver your pieces around it to attack it. Let's say c3, bc, bc, uh, I don't know, queen to e3. Knight to d2, and you already have two attackers on the c4 pawn, and it's easy it, and it's easy to pile up on that. So there are a lot of plans of attack. So this would be the c6 line, and after bishop to g5, c6 might be the most flexible and the most principled response, just trying to pressure white's queen side before white gets to do whatever he was trying to do. Uh, the second move I, I would like to look at is knight b to d7, which is uh, a normal developing move, but slightly too passive. Now, in this case, white can once again choose between f4 and knight to f3. Knight to f3 is played more commonly uh, because you want to keep this connection between the queen and the bishop. So knight to f3 here might be better. Uh, so after knight to f3, uh, black can't really continue normally with bishop to g7 because you are going to play queen to d2. So black plays h6, chasing your bishop away first. And now you can either go to d2, to e3, uh, to, to f4, or to h4. Uh, the main move is bishop to e3 and after knight g4 to go to f4, provoking the knight to move forward, so bishop e3. Knight g4 is played, but after bishop to f4, the knight is going to have to come back at some point. But black can interpose this move e5 and uh, chase the bishop away. So after bishop g3, bishop g7, queen d2, e d4, knight d4, castles, castles, knight b6. This position is once again slightly better for white. And uh, I think, once again, that white has an easier time in the attack. Now, this might be a favorable Sicilian for white. Um, instead, you, you, you don't have the e5, uh, the e pawn, you have the c pawn for black. But I think that this knight is misplaced on g4, it's going to have to come back to, to f6. And you can, uh, I've actually played this position once and I continued with f3. I put my bishop on f2, then I play g4, h4, h5, lock down this position, transferred my bishop into e3 and put pressure on this diagonal. So this is just one plan of attack, but uh, black isn't really quick to do anything. And uh, normal plans from the Sicilian defense with knight to c4, of course, don't work here. But black isn't without his own weapons. And this, this line with knight b to d7, I think, is fine for black, but it's not as active and I would recommend that you don't play that. Okay, uh, the second line, which is actually popular on the highest level, is pawn to h6, and I'm going to show you one example game in this line, because I found it very interesting. Here, once again, uh, white can choose between bishop h4 and bishop to e3. Uh, bishop h4 is a provocative move, uh, and after either bishop to g7 or c6, white should continue with the move f4, let's say bishop to g7 now, queen to d2, b5, uh, bishop to d3 uh, is one way to play, or after b5 you can play the move e5, and we are going to look at a game between Almashi Zoltan and Shakhtar Mamedyarov in, in this line. And this is very aggressive for white, uh, however, uh, the position is quite fragile, and you might have overextended in the center before finishing development. I mean, you have, but it's a question whether it will... Uh, uh, whether it will prove to be uh, be proven to be a mistake or not, so this is a very aggressive way to play. However, after c6, uh, f4, bishop g7, queen d2, b5, you can go for a more sensible continuation with bishop to d3, and now after b4, knight c to e2, uh, you can also go to d1. In this position, is considered slightly better to go here uh, to make sure you defend your pawns because your knight isn't on f3 yet. Queen b6, and now knight to f3. Uh, Black did manage to overextend. Uh, you can retreat your bishop to f2, and uh, I guess it's okay. Uh, however, after h6, uh, bishop h4, c6, f4, bishop g7, queen to d2, b5, e5 might be the better move. And the engines don't think so, but I think that after e5, b4, uh, ef6, bc3, queen c3, uh, white has a nice position. And... Uh, 
I would rather have white. It's fragile, it's uh, double-edged, but if you have the white pieces against the hypermodern opening, you want to attack as soon as, possi as possible and not allow black too much counterplay. And after h6, uh, the move bishop h4 is one way to play. Another way to play is bishop to e3, which uh, is slightly more passive and slightly more uh, accurate, according to the engine, so knight to g4. You go to, uh, you go to d2 with your bishop, you don't go here because you don't have your knight on f3 so the move e5 is much more powerful so e5 immediately and if the bishop was here it, it would actually be a tempo uh, h3 chasing the knight away knight f6 d5 e5, d5 e5, knight f3 queen e7 uh, an okay position i well this is probably probably the least uh, favorable position for white if you ask me because even though you have blocked out the black bishop with uh, the black pawn being on e5 I don't like the fact that the e4 pawn is weak. I don't like the fact that I don't have any attacking chances here and uh, I'm going to have to develop my bishop to c4, uh, try to pressure uh, the f7 pawn and after bishop g7 castles castles, it's going to be really hard to create attacking chances and even though you are up in development, I don't prefer white that much here. So after the move h6, bishop to e3 might be more precise but go for bishop to h4 and after c6, go for f4, bishop g7, queen to d2, b5, and now you can choose between either e5 or bishop to d3. And in the bishop to d3 lines, uh, you might even consider castling queen side, but it probably won't matter, matter after e5 and uh, opening up the position. So this is the move h6. Let's just look at one game in this variation. Uh, the game was played in 2011 between Almashi Zoltan and Ma Shakriar Mamediarov, both 2700s, uh, of course, very strong players. Uh, Almashi Zoltan played the burn variation, uh, and we have h6 by Mamediarov. Uh, Zoltan went for bishop to h4, c6, the most common uh, variation, f4, bishop g7, queen to d2, and this is the line we just looked at, b5, and Almashi Zoltan went for e5. Now Mamediarov continued with b4, uh, we have ef6, bc3, you can't really take the bishop because your queen is hanging with check, queen takes c3, e takes f6, castles long, castles short, bishop to d3, queen b6. Uh, a weird opposite sides castling uh, variation in which white now played a key move uh, to sort of get an advantage on the king side. One, white went for the move f5 and this is what I was talking uh, at the start of the video. You will often have chances with, the, with either e5, d5 or f5 to, to gain some space uh, on the king side or in the center. Now the move g5 probably could be played but then your bishop is just dead for the rest of the game. I mean if you play g5 uh, let's say bishop to g3. Firstly, you have to defend your pawn. Secondly, what are you going to do? Bishop f8. It doesn't really make sense. And thirdly, you are creating a target for h4, which now you can't prevent uh, white from opening the, let's say you play here, h4, bishop f8. You can't do anything to prevent uh, this line from opening and whichever pawn you take with, this is just horrible and white is winning. So after the move f5, uh, Mamediarov played the move knight to a6, keeping this tension here a3, preventing the knight from entering the b4 square, knight to c7, uh, fg6, and uh, in this position Mamediarov actually played knight to d5, gaining a tempo on the queen, but after queen to b3, you now have this annoying pin, so he exchanged, queen b3, and now an intermezzo move, just winning a pawn, gf7, rook f7, c b3, and uh, in this position white is a pawn up and white is just better. Uh, so the attack work uh, the attack worked i'm not going to go through the whole game in detail i'm just going to show you how it ended uh, why it ended up winning a piece so yeah uh Mamediarov counted on this pawn to to be strong but it really wasn't and then he lost now let's just go over the opening once again so after bishop to g5 Mamediarov went for h6 bishop h4 c6 f4 bishop g7 queen d2 b5 e5 once again, you, uh, he could have played bishop to d3, but e5 is more precise. b4, ef6, bc3, you can't take the bishop, your queen is hanging with check. queen c3, ef6, castles, castles. Bishop to d3, queen b6, and now the key move, f5. You have pressure along the h file in these lines once you have castled queen side. And uh, I think it's uh, 
of course, uh, taking with the g pawn is horrible, taking with the bishop is horrible. So, Mamedyarov had a tough choice to make, and I wanted to show you this game because of the move f5. And I think it's a very thematic idea to remember if you are going to play the burn defense, because often you are going to uh, have an opportunity to play the move f5, and either to provoke, most commonly to provoke the move uh, g5, and then just continue with h4. Because once the move g5 has been played, there is no way white can prevent opening up the h5. Okay, uh, now let's go over the main line. Uh, after bishop to g5, uh, we just looked at c6, h6, and knight b to d7. Uh, now let's look at the most commonly played move, bishop to g7. After bishop to g7, as in the 150 attack, uh, you can consider black to have gone slightly wrong, even though it's there's nothing wrong with this move in theory. It's slightly wrong because you are going uh, into white's hands and you are following white's plan. So white's plan, of course, is queen d2, bishop h6, so queen d2. White can also continue with f4, uh, which I don't really like, because after castles, queen d2, you don't, you don't have this connection anymore. c6, bishop d3, b5, knight f3. Uh, I would prefer to move queen to d2, so just play that. h6, chasing the bishop away uh, before black has castled, because now it has two defenders. And now, bishop to h4 g5, bishop to g3. This is the main line of the burn variation, and this is considered to be the best line for black. But uh, in this line, black is best advised to castle queenside, which is never in his favor because black, as we said, wants to break open the position with c6, b5 or c5. And once black has castled queenside, there are no longer any prospects of a queenside pawn advance. Uh, here, black should follow up with knight to h5. Uh, since you can take the bishop, you should sometimes take it. Castle long, knight c6, bishop b5, pinning the knight, bishop d7, knight g2, e2, uh, knight takes, h takes, e6. Uh, this is the start of the opening. Black has created a small center with pawns on e6 and d6, still keeping the option of playing f5 or c5. And most commonly, black is going to continue with queen to e7, castle long and trying to play on the king side now and i prefer this position for white because firstly uh, there are some tactical threats on the g5 pawn wh while the rook is still here and the king is uncastled uh, there are possibilities of once again the move uh, d5 and the move e5 and the move f4 uh, opening up things and uh, Black's pawn breaks that don't seem as dangerous. Uh, g4, now locking down the pawn and perhaps preparing the move g3, f4 or simply f4. Queen e7, queen to e3, uh, castles, king to b1, safety first, rook h to e8, knight to g3. You want to get into this square and ideally into this square, king b8, f3. And uh, nothing major in the position for white, but easier to play. Uh, if you compare the pieces, uh, the bishop on uh, b5 is definitely better than the bishop on d7. Uh, the knight on f3 is definitely worse than the bishop on g7. But white's rooks are more active and white's queen is more active. So, a position you could definitely play. And uh, even though this seems to be the main line for black, I would still recommend the, the move c6 or the move h6 because they, they are more aggressive. But the bishop to g7 line is okay. Uh, if you are prepared to go outside of your comfort zone, and in the peer's defense, if black has to play h6, g5, and castle queen side, that's outside of his comfort zone, because that's nowhere near a normal peer setup and a normal peer plan. As you can see, um, normal peer features with the king on g8, and the pawns on this square, and the, the moves either e5 or c5 being, being played, are not in this position, this is completely different. So. Even though the main line is fine for black, I think the burn uh, variation is okay for white because you either get white, either get black out of his comfort zone, or you get uh, a comfortable position with a with a slight advantage. So even though it's not the main line, even though bishop to e3 going for the 150 attack is more uh, flexible, this is a venomous opening. And if black doesn't know what he's doing, if he continues with his normal plans, then he's going to be in trouble. In this position already, if black forgets what he's doing and instead of in this position, castling queenside, if he castles kingside, then you already have a clear target. I mean, you can continue simply with g3, and 
I don't know what black what black plays. Your next move is f4, and you are undermining this pawn, getting your rook to f1 or doubling your rooks on the h file. You can even continue this way. You can you can simply play rook to h5 and get your other rook to to, to h1 and break open the position. So black can easily go wrong in the main line. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you like this video on the burn variation of the Peart's defense. Uh, I hope it will use as a useful uh, sideline uh, for the players with the white pieces. And if you play the Peart's with the black pieces, I hope uh, I have helped you gain some knowledge on the sideline which you might encounter in your own games and that I have prepared you for it well enough so that you don't lose out of the opening. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Do let me know what you think and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the Peerts uh, with the classical variation, which is probably the main line still of the Peerts, even though the Austrian attack is somewhere uh, near that or equal even. So the Austrian attack, which I have already covered, and the classical are the two main responses White has to the Peerts defense. <clears throat> if you haven't seen the introductory video on the Peerts, please do, uh, to make sure you get a grasp of the basics and the common variations. And in this video we are going to focus only on the classical. So after e4, black plays d6, the Peerts defense, d4, white takes up the center, because in all hypermodern openings where black gives up the center to Fianchetto, his bishop, and to castle his king, uh, white should respond by taking the center. There's basically nothing better to do. If white plays a passive move such as d3, then black's play will have been sort of justified. Uh, black continues with knight to f6, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, white defends, black plays g6, preparing to Fianchetto, getting a sort of king's indian setup, and now the classical defense is knight to f3, the classical variation. Uh, we've been through f4, which is the more aggressive Austrian attack, and knight to f3, the classical variation is, it's not passive, it's simply following the rules of classical chess, and the classical Peerts is one opening when you can see uh, the two players playing uh, different styles of chess and the black is going for the hypermodern, uh, completely ignoring the central control, preparing to Fianchetto castle and then crash through the center later on. And white is following all the basic chess rules. You could say that uh, white is playing as if he had a textbook in his hand. So the basic rules of chess is take up the center, develop your knights before you develop your bishop, then you develop the rest of your minor pieces and castle. And that's what white is doing. Black is doing the opposite. Black is not taking up the center. Black is going to Fianchetto and castle before bringing out his other knight, and then he's going to break in the center before finishing his development. So black is going for the hypermodern style of chess, and white is going for the classical. Now, uh, three moves uh, which you are going to always see uh, from, from black are castles, uh, king here, and c6 in most positions. These are, these are going to be uh, black's attempts. And you can count on the fact that black is either going to be playing c6, e5, c5, and trying to break through the center that way as white. And you have to adjust your play accordingly. Now, what white wants to do, white wants to get out uh, his light squared bishop from f1. And this bishop can go to several places. Uh, the main move is bishop to e2, but it can also go to, to f4, c4, uh, c4, f4, and develop that way. Uh, another way to play for white is to develop his dark squared bishop first, and then to go for queenside castling and exchanging the fianchetto with bishop. So white has several ways he can play. The main thing is that you keep up the pressure uh, on Black's position, uh, not allow him too much initiative when he opens up the center, which is going to happen most of the time. And the last thing is that uh, from the start of the opening, from knight to f3, you need to have one simple goal in mind, and that's to either exchange the g7 defender, the g7 bishop, or to block it with the move e5. Uh, ideally, you want to uh, dampen this bishop or exchange it to make sure that Black doesn't have a defender. Uh, black will always play bishop to g7 here, and here white gets to choose a variation. Uh, we are going to go over five moves for white. Uh, other moves have, be have been played, but these five are definitely the most popular. Uh, the main move is the quiet system, bishop to e2. 
which is simply preparing to castle as soon as possible. Uh, both sides here castle. And now uh, black can choose between two defenses, the check and the parma. Uh, usually uh, they will not transpose, but it's possible that they will. One move that black can choose is c6 and another one is g bishop to g4. I think c6 is more sensible and it is the main line. Uh, let's go over bishop to g4 first. Bishop g4 sort of pins the knight and... Uh, Develops the bishop to the most active square, going to e6 would uh, run into d5. Even though it would open up the diagonal, the bishop would then have to move again. Uh, here, white continues with bishop e3, knight to c6. One advantage of not having played c6 is that you can put your knight in the center. You are, however, vul vulnerable to, to d5 attacks, but that shouldn't really be played, because uh, then the bishop might take, and uh, you're going to be left with a bad bishop versus a good knight. Uh, queen to d2 is the main move here, e5 by black breaking in the center, and uh, well, now whatever you do, uh, you are going to block out the black bishop, so that's a good thing, and um, I actually prefer this variation for white very much, and the engines do too, because in, in my opinion, the, the main goal of white's play here is to make one of black's pieces worse than your own, and in this case, the dark squared bishop on g7, is a clear example of that and you can see that white can either take on d5 after which the pawn will be on d5 the black pawn or white can white can push through with d5 after which the bishop is blocked as well mm -hmm. so those are the two main moves the main idea is d5 and after d5 rook a to d1 defending the queen and i love this position for black i mean uh, it's not that you have, uh, for, for white, I'm sorry, it's not that you have a clear advantage or a winning advantage, but you're simply playing against this piece, and uh, I think that in most cases could be uh, a significant edge to play for. The engines f uh, judge this position as slightly, slightly better for white after the queen exchange, but still you're playing against one piece, so you can adjust your uh, strategy accordingly. Uh, the position here continues with queen to c8, black declines a trade, and queen to c1. This would be sort of the main line of the classical uh, Pirts, and this is what you can expect if both sides play the main move. Now, after queen to d2, e5, uh, you can also play d5, which is another uh, good way to play. However, after knight to e7, you can be sure that uh, at some point black is going to want to break open this position, either with c6 or with f5, f5 more commonly. And now if black gets the move f5 in, you have sort of a king's Indian setup in which... Black is fine, and if black manages to open up the center, then he's going to be okay. Uh, rook a to d1, bishop to d7, uh, retreating the bishop, and now knight to e1 is the main move, because you want to be able to parry the move f5, and perhaps even play the move f4 yourself. So the, the quiet system and the parma defense in the Pirts, uh, in the Pirts classical, often... Uh, transposed to a sort of a king's indian setup they're both hyper modern openings with black having generally the same ideas so if if you are unfamiliar with the peers then uh, playing against the king's indian or studying the king's indian could help as well because often you're going to get positions like this especially in the bishop to g4 line where, where black doesn't play the move c6 early on which enables white to play d5 and uh, in the king's indian you're going to have pawns on c6 d5 and d4 and black is going to be playing for f5 so if you get these positions let's just go over that again knight f3 the the classical bishop g7 bishop e2 castles castles bishop g4 bishop e3 knight c6 queen d2 e5 d5 this is, uh, I would say, uh, a King's Indian setup, and you have to be prepared for f5, you have to be prepared for, for c6, and the move knight to e7 helps support both of these, so black has a clear plan of attack. On the other hand, if white can, can manage to trade off the dark squared bishop and uh, create an attack before black manages to, then he's going to be better. Uh, the main move after castles is c6, the check defense, and uh, here white usually plays the move a4, stopping the move b5 because that's one of black's main ideas, trying to dislodge this knight and gain space on the queen side. Black can either play a5 here, stopping white from expanding further, after which white plays h3, stopping bishop to g4, knight a6, bishop e3, knight b4, and black sort of gets this annoying knight in, in white's position, but 
I wouldn't recommend uh, playing this way for black. I think that after a4, knight b to d7 is much more sensible move, uh, keeping control of the central squares and fighting for central control, finally, because you still need to get either c5 or e5 in. Uh, here, h3 by white and e5. <clears throat> and you can see that the knight on d7 is very useful in this position and uh, I think this is a more sensible way to play. Now of course you don't have the move d5 because black played c6 so that's one advantage of playing c6 the, the check defense. So d5, d5, bishop to e3, queen to e7 developing the queen, queen to d3, knight h5, the knight is going into f4 and um, <clears throat> once again I, I think that this position is fine for white. Uh, it's slightly less good than the bishop to g4 lines in which I think that uh, white uh, has an easier game but this is not the king's indian setup and black can't really go for the same plans okay f5 is a move after uh, in some positions but I think that uh, this is fine as well and black should either continue with f5 if it doesn't weaken the position too much or continue with knight to f4 because white never really wants to give up his uh, his bishop here white plays uh, rook f to d1, getting the rook to the center, knight to f4, queen to d6, uh, of course the queen was attacked, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes d6, rook takes d6, and once again you have a position in which you are playing against this bishop. And uh, whenever this cap happens in the classical peerts, which is why I play the classical peerts, uh, the classical variation against the peerts sometimes, I think that white has an easier game and especially in this position where the bishop on c8 is stuck as well and black is going to have to spend several moves to, to develop and you can see that it's not easy. If the knight goes to f6 then in some positions this is a threat even and uh, and white has an easier game. So remember that your main goal in the quiet, uh, quiet system is to dampen the bishop on g7 and that you have to be prepared for king's indian types of setups. Uh, the second line I wanted to go over is h3, uh, the so-called Schlechter variation, which uh, often transposes and uh, where the bishop still goes to e2, as in the quiet system, but then it will eventually get to c4, uh, because white uh, aims to put pressure on black's position. And I'm not really sure what I think about this system. I think h3 is quite a slow move and I would prefer to develop my bishop, but still it's playable and it could... Uh, get your opponent out of prep if he isn't uh, ready for this. Black castles, bishop e3, c6, uh, a4, as in the other variation, knight bd7, a5. Here, if uh, since black didn't play a5, you can expand now whether that's uh, needed or not is arguable. I like the move a5 because it stops knight to b6 in some positions. Uh, queen to c7, bishop to e2, finally developing the bishop, and now e5 d5, d5, and bishop to c4. <clears throat> You're basically waiting for black to give up his cards in the center to play one of the committal moves, e5 especially, and after that you can continue uh, developing your bishop to the c4 square and and putting pressure on, on black's position on the f7 square. Now another thing in this position is that black does actually have the move b5 even though you have Ampasan and uh, he's going to try to put pressure on your queen side, but you're going to castle short and try to play against this bishop once again. So knight h5 going into f4, castles, knight f4, queen to d2, uh, threatening in some positions to take this knight because uh, this pawn would be vulnerable, but in this case it would open up the bishop, so it's not such a smart idea. b5, uh, you have to take this ampasan, you don't need to allow black to expand. a b6, knight b6, bishop takes b6 is the main move, because you are going to leave this knight here and uh, this knight could be annoying and you want to keep this bishop. Queen takes b6, knight to a4, chasing the queen away, queen c7, knight to c5. This is all theory still and white is considered to have a slight edge in this position. Once again, of the, the most important thing is that you're playing against the g7 bishop. And even if you get out of theory, even if you play the classical peers and you're not sure what the exact move order is, remember that you need to try and play against the bishop and uh, try to take the d file. If the a-file gets open, keep control of the a-file. In some positions you are going to be able to play a move such as uh, queen to a5 and after the exchange double up your rooks and simply put pressure on the a-pawn. So that's one thing I like about the Schlechter variation. 
And uh, black is going to aim for uh, moves such as rook to uh, rook to d8, uh, f6, and bishop f8, or bishop h6, and uh, trying to get some tricks in with knight takes h3, or bringing the knight back into the e6 square and putting pressure on your position. Still, uh, in my opinion, a slightly better position for white. But uh, the move h3 is a sideline, and I would recommend uh, the quiet system instead. I think it's more sensible. Uh, the third variation I wanted to go over is uh, the most aggressive one, and uh, probably the most fun one to play, and uh, you have a very straightforward plan here of uh, bishop to e3, queen to d2, bishop to h6, exchanging the dark squared bishop, and going for h4, h5, h6 and uh, crashing through black's king. So bishop to e3, black castles, queen to d2, preparing bishop h6, c6, preparing either the move b5 or the move e5, bishop h6, b5, bishop to d3, bishop g4, bishop g7, king g7, and knight to g5. Uh, this is the only variation in, in which white is slightly worse, but from a human perspective I would definitely disagree, because uh, well, who is this easier to play for? I, I think that uh, white's moves are almost automatic. White is going to block out this diagonal to make sure he can castle queenside. And then white is going to play king to b1. He's going to get his knight back to e2 because it's going to be chased away with b4. And then he's going to play h4 h5. In some positions, sack the exchange, get his other rook to, to g1 and a simple plan. Uh, instead of knight to g5, which isn't uh, the, the best move, according to the engines, knight to g1 is the best move. Black plays e5, d5, d5, h3, bishop e6. And now returning the knight to f3. Uh, that's, why, that's one way to play. And another way to play, which I prefer, is the move h3, which the engines hate. The engines give this as plus uh, minus 5 for black. But I think it's a, it's a great way to play, because you're forcing a capture now. Bishop takes f3, g f3, knight bd7 castles and after e5 d5 d5 uh, you can play the move f4 and uh, i would always have white here i don't care what the engines say i mean it's minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.6 that's almost nothing and you are threatening uh, f5 opening up the position you're going to play h4 h5 and if you manage to get uh, if you manage to get f5 and h4 h5 then in conjunction with rook to g1 this is going to be really uh, hard to meet for black and uh, you're playing against humans uh, there's time on the clock which is running out and uh, your moves are simpler to play you already know that you have to play king b1 you know that you are going to play either f5 or h4 h5 and it's simple to play simple to play that's i think that's one of the key things against the peers defense that white's position is always simpler white has more space white has a clear plan of attack and black sort of has to get get his move order correct and get get his pawn breaks at the correct time uh, and prevent white from attacking, while on the other hand, uh, black's attack is sort of slow, b4 is coming, but it doesn't really threaten anything yet, so I prefer this way. However, the main line after bishop takes g7, king takes g7 is the move knight to g5, now b4, knight e2, h6, knight to f3. Uh, the point was to provoke the move h6, uh, I'm not sure how... Uh, how important that is, uh, still I would prefer the move h3 and just allowing black to capture an f3 immediately. But as I said, a, a, very, good, a very good position, even though the engines would disagree. Uh, so this was the move bishop to e3. Remember this as after knight f3, bishop g7, bishop e3 as the most aggressive setup you could get. And remember that if you're playing uh, an engine, then you are most likely going to be worse. But against humans, it's really hard to play for black. And uh, this is why I prefer this variation in the in the classical peers. And now the two sidelines, uh, which are both fine. Uh, the bishop to c4 sidelines uh, side sometimes uh, transposes to the Schlechter variation. And this is simply a more aggressive uh, place to put the bishop. You are... Uh, threatened in some positions with bishop to g4, but uh, black usually doesn't go for that. Both sides castle here, and uh, black goes for a trick. The main line here is to exchange central pawns and for black to get rid of white center. So in the bishop to c4 line, you are uh, giving black the opportunity uh, to 
break open your center without playing e5 or c5 and then to commit to one of these moves later on which is okay for black so black has a tactical trick here knight takes e4 the point is that he is going to win the pawn afterwards with this move so knight takes e4 knight takes e4 and now d5 bishop d3 is the main move d4 bishop e4 knight to d7 and uh, this is the most boring way to play even though uh, five bishop to c4 seems like a much more aggressive move than bishop to e2 this tactical exchange actually allows black to enter an end game in which white doesn't have that many chances white has no advantage here i mean the engines like white slightly and prefer white but there's basically nothing here both sides have the bishop pair black is going to bring his knight out and it's going to be fine uh, c3 is the main move here c5 bishop to c2 cd4 knight d4 e5 black just exchanges exchanges everything knight b5 knight f6 queen d8 rook d8 bishop g5 it seems uncomfortable for black but it really isn't h6 bishop f6 bishop f6 you can give up your bishop because this uh, this piece is worse than the knight and you can see that this is completely equal 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 uh, after a couple of uh, exchanges this position is just an opposite colored bishops ending in which of course you can win it this position doesn't mean that that it, sh it will be a draw definitely but it's highly likely that the position would end in a draw the only advantage i see for white is the three to two pawn majority on the queen side which is going to be easier to utilize than the four to three black has on the king side but that's almost never enough and uh, black is going to be able to control the dark squares with the, with his bishop you're not going to be able to oppose that so queening a pawn is going to be extremely hard and that's why i think bishop to c4 is not really a challenging way for 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 white to play and i would i would recommend avoiding that unless you want to draw or something which you should never do uh, another move I wanted to talk about is bishop to f4 uh, with the similar idea of queen to d2 castles but slightly more aggressive and preventing the move e5 and uh, I'm not really sure which move to prefer now let's look at the downsides between uh, bishop to bishop to e3 and bishop to f4 uh, bishop to e3 serves the same purpose queen to d2 castles and uh, Opa. and bishop to h6 and bishop to f4 is uh, has the same idea but its upside is that it's uh, controlling the e5 square so e5 is going to be much harder to play the downside is that the knight coming to h5 in some positions comes with a tempo and uh, okay if white play if black plays that immediately then the bishop can just retreat to e2 and the position could be repeated or something uh, but if white doesn't repeat white had won a tempo so i think bishop to f4 is a more sensible move and uh, i'm i'm thinking of entering the position we just saw with bishop to e3 but with starting with bishop to f4 because i can't really see uh, uh, a problem with that and bishop to f4 is a more active move stopping e5 so why not uh, after bishop to f4 why, uh, black castles queen to d2 preparing your plan bishop g4 now castles queen side allowing the bishop to take here c6 preparing b5 king b1 b5 h3 bishop takes g takes knight b to d7 bishop h6 extremely easy for for white to play once again as in all of these variations where uh, white goes for bishop h6 and exchanging uh, the engines think it's either equal or slightly better for black uh, but white's attack is faster and uh, why wouldn't you play this 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 is a pattern that you all know this is something you're all familiar with and you know that black will have a hard time defending if the bishop gets gets exchanged off uh, after the move a5 bishop takes uh, king takes h4 who would want to have black here you have a slightly ruined pawn structure on the king side which is irrelevant black has uh, a queen side pawn storm which isn't dangerous yet and uh, uh, you, you can have a very simple plan uh, bishop to d3 h5 knight takes h5 you can sacrifice your exchange and after here rook here and black can hardly defend that i mean it's it's really hard and it's very easy to go wrong for black while on the other hand there's almost no way for white to go wrong yet of course you can but not yet uh, h5 
Black's best try is to stop the, the kingside advance. Knight to e2, bring your knight uh, to f4, which is a, a key square. And once you get your knight to f4 and your rook to g1, then you might have some tricks like this. b4, rook to g1, king to h7, getting away from this, knight to f4 anyway. And now e5 by black, uh, d e5, d e5. Uh, yeah, even here even the engines start to like white, so the original evaluation might be uh, wrong. Uh, your general plan here is retreat the knight somewhere, I prefer going to h3 and then uh, to g5, even though my knight will have to move uh, if black plays f6. So my general plan is knight h3, uh, knight to uh, g5, bishop to c4 and uh, putting pressure on the position. Once you put your bishop on c4, then after f6 you have tricks like like this. And uh, yeah, a very comfortable position for white to play. So to, conclu to conclude, uh, you have a lot of options in the classical after the move bishop to g7. The main move is bishop to e2, go going for the quiet system, sensible development, classical chess, etc. In which case you are either going to face the move c6 and b5, or you are going to face the move bishop to g4. Uh, you can go for the move h3, the Schlechter variation, sort of a sideline, which uh, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, the move bishop to e3 is fine, but as I said, the move bishop to f4 serve the, serves the same purpose, and I would recommend that, because it stops an early e5. And the last thing is, uh, if you are playing a much higher rated opponent and you want a safe position, then bishop to c4 with best play from both sides uh, is uh, a drone position. And you can remember these moves, It's there, there aren't that many, this is 20 moves until a draw and uh, just play that if you, are, if you are scared. If you're not scared, if you're feeling aggressive, play the move bishop to f4. I would definitely recommend this. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope you got something from this video on the classical pirts. Uh, do let me know what you think, let me know which variations you play, and uh, have a good time playing it. Stay tuned for more chess, see you later. Bye bye! Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'll continue the series on the pirts defense with the Austrian attack, which is the most aggressive and most popular way to fight the hypermodern pirts. Uh, if you haven't seen the introductory video, please do see it before you continue uh, to make sure you, you have an understanding of the basics of the opening and all the common variations. And here we are going to cover the Austrian attack in detail. So, uh, e4, d6, the Pirates defense. Uh, the following moves are pretty much mandatory. d4, taking up the center, because with the hypermodern hyper openings, such as the Pirates or the King's Indian defense, Black is giving up the center to white, he is preparing to fianchetto his, uh, his bishop on the king side to castle and then to crash through the center with the move c5 and d5. And the most principled way for white to continue is to take that center. So d4, knight to f6, knight to c3 defending the e4 pawn, g6 preparing to fianchetto and now the Austrian attack with f4. Uh, the other variations we are going to go over in uh, the next videos. So the move f4 is fairly uh, straightforward, uh, it uh, sort of shows the cards for white and uh, the move is twofold. Firstly, uh, it's, it's designed to create a kingside attack and secondly, is, it's designed to support the move e5, which is white's uh, main advance in this variation. And when white or if white gets the move e5 in, then white is going to have uh, a, a vast... Uh, advantage in space in the center of the board, which could be crucial. And another key thing is that once the pawn is placed on e5, this bishop is sort of dampened and its scope is uh, significantly reduced. So the move e5 is definitely one of the main purposes of the move f4. Mm -hmm. uh, furthermore, uh, the move sort of restricts uh, black pieces already, uh, and uh, the move gives white much more space at the start. And if black allows you, with his hi hypermodern style, to take the center, you should take it. So, uh, arguably, the move f4, the Austrian attack, is the most principled way for white to continue. Uh, here, the only move for black is bishop to g7. White plays knight to f3. All of these moves, these two moves, are going to be played all the time. There's nothing better for either side. And here, black gets to choose. Here, black can either castle or, or play the move c5. Now, 
The move c5 sort of goes against uh, the principles of the opening, even though it's not a bad move. Usually, black should castle, put his king to safety, and, lo and only then open up the center with the move c5. But uh, if black doesn't do that now, in some variations with castling, there's a chance that he, he isn't going to be able to do that at all. Uh, so, the move castles is the main move. And I think it's the safer option, but probably uh, the better option as well. Here, uh, white has four different replies. Bishop to e3, uh, e5, bishop to d3, and bishop to e2. I think that bishop to e3 is quite a, quite an interesting sideline, so we are going to go over that first. Bishop to d3 is the main move, uh, device variation. So after castles, bishop to e3 uh, is, well... Preparing to castle queenside, which I really like in this variation, and even though your bishop is sometimes going to be vulnerable to, to knight attacks from g4, and there's a chance that you might lose this bishop and therefore uh, not be able to exchange it on h6 for black's main defender, uh, regardless of that, I think that castling queenside gives white tremendous chances here and h4, h5, etc. Uh, Black here continues with b6, fianchettoing his queenside bishop as well, this is the main move, creating a lot of light squared weaknesses, but they're, they're pretty irrelevant in this position. Queen to d2, preparing to castle queenside, bishop b7, and now e5, gaining space, dampening the bishop on g7. And I just love this position for white. Of course, uh, bishop takes f3 isn't really a threat, because white is castling queenside anyway, so having doubled pawns on the f-file could actually be very useful, preventing the knight from jumping into g4, so this is never a threat. Uh, so black continues with knight to g4 immediately, and uh, black basically uh, will take the bishop, there's nothing white can do, retreating to g1 would be just ridiculous. So castles, and here black doesn't capture immediately, black pushes through with c5, and uh, here you can see, uh, well, this is probably the most visual variation of the Pirts, and probably my favorite, uh, this Kuraitsa variation with bishop to e3, because both sides are forcing their plans uh, without... Well, without being stopped, and there's nothing the other side can do. So, White managed to achieve two things he wanted. He has a broad center with an advanced pawn on e5, blocking out the bishop. And he also has a potential for a huge kingside attack. On the other hand, Black has castled, uh, and Black has challenged the center with the move c5, trying to break open White's bind uh, on the central squares. Here, the best move for White is dc5, and after bc5, bishop c5, uh, a temporary pawn sacrifice uh, for black and uh, of course you can't take uh, because the queen is hanging so queen to a5 bishop to a3 and now d takes e5 uh, here black gets the pawn back uh, <coughs> here the, the main move is knight to d5 taking f5 is losing uh, because if you take then bishop to h6 and after let's say knight to g5 and this happens you're going to be lost so taking on e5 doesn't work, so after d takes e5, knight to d5 is the main move, uh, trying to bring the knight into the center, challenging the e7 pawn and causing a lot of problems for black. Here black's best idea is to exchange the queens and the game continues from here. Uh, the engines give it as better for white, plus one or more, and I completely understand that. If you look at these two pieces, they are yet to be developed. Um, White, of course, still has two pieces to develop, but it's sort of easier to play because you have more control. These three pieces are very active. Black should never really exchange this bishop for the knight, and this knight could be easily chased away after that this pawn is even hanging. So I think this variation, the Kuraitsa variation, is very good for white. Another move after bishop a3, d takes e5 is h3, simply chasing the knight away, and now after knight to h6, you can now take on e5 and uh, dissolve this center, which could be causing you some trouble, and uh, the e7 pawn hanging is hanging as well in some positions. So the Kuraitsa variation is very interesting. Uh, e5, uh, the Unziker attack is, I would say, premature, because you get to play e5 in, in most variations anyway, and I would prefer developing my minor pieces first before pushing through with d5, but still, uh, d5, f takes e5, the point of playing f4, Knight to d5, bishop c4, bishop e6, defending the knight. Knight d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, queen d5, and now queen to e2. White has traded off a lot of pieces, which means that uh, he isn't going to have such a strong attack. And that's why the Unziker variation, even though it's seemingly most aggressive with an early e5, 
I would say isn't as good for white because you play the Austri Austrian attack to crush black, not to trade off the pieces. And now, even though this bishop is uh, worse than this bishop, it's not really clear wh where the c1 bishop is going to be as useful to, to prove the, uh, the, the bad positioning of the bishop on g7. So I really don't think this variation is as good. The engines give it as better for white as in every variation of the peers, plus 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but it's nothing major, and uh, with a move such as f5, black is going to be able to break through uh, the center uh, and crush this e5 pawn and just continue from there. Uh, black's main idea here is b5, trying to undermine this way and then to play f6, but I mean, after castles, knight c6, c3, f6, uh, ef6, ef6, you can see that this center is sort of crumbling and it's not as secure as it might have seemed after the move f4. So this center could be a liability as well. And the Unziker attack is the easiest, the easiest way to go wrong. Not that it's a bad opening, I mean, it's better for white, but I think that the other variations are more favorable. Uh, here after bishop g7, knight to f3 castles, another sideline is bishop to e2, which I... I can understand it's sort of a combination of the classical and the Austrian you're waiting to, to use your pawn majority. But this now gives black time for an immediate c5, breaking open the center, dc5, queen a5. Uh, black is of course never going to capture this way. Black's main idea is to play queen to a5 and then to take. And now after castles, queen takes c5, king to h1, knight to c6, a normal opening. Uh, White's idea will be either to play f5 or to play e5 uh, when the situation is right and try to open up the king side, but I'm not sure that this move bishop to e2 is as significant and uh, I think that this variation is sort of a sideline which uh, you should know with black if you play the peers and which you should learn to be able to parry it, but I'm not sure it's as challenging. And the main line after castles is the move bishop to d3. Uh, this is called the vice variation, and now uh, black has two moves. He can either play knight to a6 or knight to c6. Knight to a6 is great because the knight can then come to b4 and uh, cause some trouble in the center, harassing this bishop, uh, defending the d5 square, coming back into c6 if necessary, and putting pressure on the c2 square. So knight to a6 is the main line. Knight to c6 is a sideline which is okay, and uh, here white chooses between castles and d5 which is often a choice and uh, in in the austrian attack and in other variations of the peers black is going to have a choice between c5 and castle and white is going to have a choice between e5 and castles and here i think castles is the principled way to play uh, castles e5 for black is allowed of course so if after knight to c6 you play e5 immediately black isn't going to be able to play it so you sort of have to decide what you want to do. So after knight to c6 uh, in the in the vice variation, if you want to make sure that you get the central control and central space with d5, then play it immediately because if you castle, black is going to play e5 and after f5 d5 d5, you will have advanced your d pawn, which is arguably even better for blocking out this bishop, but you've sort of killed off your bishop as well and your bishop on d3 doesn't have as much scope. So now knight d4 is the main move, a bit of tactics here, knight e5, uh, knight e4, this knight is hanging, so it's okay, knight e4, bishop e5, the center is dissolved, white doesn't have as much control, but after the move such as c4, uh, white is going to be fine, and I think that the fact that the f file is open favors, favors white. On the other hand, your knight isn't on f3, and the queen coming to h4 could cause you a lot of problems. So after the move knight to c6, uh, Castles is fine, e5 is fine as well, uh, you don't allow black to play e5, so now d5, f5, knight h5, bishop to e3, bishop to g4. Uh, well, a lot could be said about this variation as well. I mean, uh, in the castles line, the center gets sort of dissolved, and in this line with e5, the center is more of a liability, I would say, because now already... In some positions, white is uh, white is threatened to lose the d4 pawn because there are too too many attackers on it. So let's say if if white is, if white does nothing here, then bishop takes, queen takes, and this pawn is in trouble. So yeah, you have to be careful here. So knight to c6 is a sideline to look out for, and uh, definitely a worthy mention because it does put pressure on the d4 pawn immediately. But as I said, knight to a6 is the main line. And here, uh, white can once again choose between castles and e5. Castles is by far the most popular move. Uh, e5 once again uh, is fine, and in this line it might be uh, better, because the knight isn't on c6. Uh, 
So now knight to d7, bishop to e3 developing, knight to b4, as I said, putting pressure on your bishop, that's one uh, advantage of having your knight on a6. Castles, knight takes d3, queen takes d3, c6. Uh, this is probably my favorite way to play uh, with white, and this is probably my favorite variation against the peers. And I think that in the main line with knight to a6, and th this is the main line of the Austrian attack, I think white stands... Uh, stands better. The, the engines give it as a small advantage, but I think it's just much easier to play. It's really not clear what the g7 bishop is doing, it's not clear how the, the d7 knight is going back into the game. Of course it could go via b6 and d5, but it will take some moves. And uh, in the meanwhile, all the white pieces are harmonically developed, the rook is coming either to d1 or to e1, and white has finished his development, and you can see that black still has to move uh, two pieces. And uh, the bishop is going to take some moves to develop too. So this line is uh, great, I would say. So after knight to a6, I would advise uh, the move e5. And after e5, uh, the knight can't really go to h5. Uh, d7 is much better. Bishop e3, knight b4, castles. Knight takes d3, queen takes d3, c6. Black has wasted uh, some tempi with knight a6 to b4. Knight b4 takes d3. And you can see that uh, in the meanwhile, white has developed while black kept moving uh, one of his pieces around. Uh, and after knight to a6, castles uh, is another move. e5, I would say, is the best and most aggressive, but castles is another way to play. After castles, black, of course, plays c5, breaking through the center. Remember this with the black pieces. If you can, play c5, open up the center. e5 is another idea, but I think in, in this position, c5 is much better. c5, and white continues with d5. Uh, blocking out the center. Bishop to g4, pinning the knight, bishop c4, knight c7, rerouting the knight back, and black is often going to have a plan of e6, undermining this way and bringing his knight back into the center. Uh, h3, chasing the bishop away, uh, there's nothing better but to take, takes, takes, e6, undermining the center, d6, f6, and now bishop to e3. And, uh, well, uh, this is considered to be the main, 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 main line of the Austrian attack of the Weiss variation. Once again, it, Black's center uh, is a liability here, more so than White's, and uh, White is uh, going to have a hard time breaking through it anyway, so one of the plans is to simply double up your rooks on the d-file and use the fact that this pawn is so weak. Uh, one common plan is to play a4 to stop any b5s, b dislodging your defenders of the of the d5 square. And if you can manage to double up your rooks, uh, perhaps play e5 when the situation is right, when d5 isn't possible, then you're going to be great. C5, The c5 pawn is weak, there are even tri tricks of, let's say, rook a to d1, you're already threatening bishop takes c5. So there's a lot of play in this position. And the pierce is a great opening because it gives both sides a lot of chances. More so to white. Uh, and even the engines agree, but black has a lot of play. Okay, uh, and the other move after f4, bishop g7, knight f3, if black doesn't castle, uh, it's for him to play the immediate c5, which is far more aggressive and uh, far less safe. Here, white has two moves, either bishop b5 check, which is the main line and the most principled move, or dc5. After dc5, which is okay, queen to a5, bishop d3, queen c5, queen to e2, preparing to dis, uh, dislodge the queen this way. Uh, I think the queen is misplaced, and uh, the queen is often misplaced on the c5 square, and it's going to be a tempo gain for the bishop. So here, uh, black castles, uh, bishop e3, queen to a5, castles, bishop g4. Once again, uh, compared to development, uh, white is a tempo up, and the white pieces are just perfect. On the other hand, in these lines where black plays the immediate c5, opening up the center and forcing dc, this bishop doesn't have that many problems. So, for the players with the black pieces, after knight to f3, I think I would recommend the move c5, because uh, c5 indirectly, indirectly helps your bishop be more active. So c5, dc5, queen a5, bishop d3, queen takes uh, here. Castles, uh, bishop e3, queen a5, castles, bishop g4, is better for white, but I think black has much more chances, because uh, this bishop is more active, and these lines with c5 are called the dragon formation, because you can see that it's similar to the Sicilian dragon when c5 and dc5 happen, uh, this pawn structure is actually uh, completely identical. After queen to e2, here, uh, black doesn't have to castle, black can play the immediate bishop g4 and castle afterwards, but the lines transpose. 
And uh, if not dc5, after c5, white has another option, which I think is better, bishop b5 check, developing a piece with tempo, uh, bishop to d7, blocking out the, the, the check, that's the main move. You can take, but it's a sideline, which I think isn't as popular. This is, uh, this is a pawn sacrifice, but just temporary, because you can see that there are prob problems on c3, so after bishop takes d7, knight f d7 is the best move, opening up the bishop to make sure you can play b5 d5 b5 knight takes b5 and now queen to a5 check forcing the knight to c3 and black regains the pawn i mean it's okay both sides stand well i would say so bishop takes d7 is a sideline which i wouldn't recommend for white because you sort of have a very aggressive uneven game for both sides with uh, a lot of tactical possibilities and as white in the austrian attack you want to have a peaceful advantage so after bishop to d7 I wouldn't advise you to take the bishop, I would advise you to play the move e5. And what this does is that now if you ever take, uh, there's no queen to a5 check because the knight can simply return to c3 and there are no problems with the bishop. So the move e5 is much more principled. Here black continues with bishop to g4 and now e6. Uh, and here there's another move taking on d7 as I said, but e6 is uh, the main line and in some cases it leads to a perpetual check but uh, it's a very aggressive way for white to play and it could surprise uh, the players who play the peers defense but let's look at bishop takes d7 which is probably the more the more human way to play so bishop takes queen takes uh, d5 d5 h3 e4 knight e4 knight f6 uh, there's no more center for white but after bishop takes d7 queen takes d7 d5 d5 uh, of course, you can't take with the f-pawn because it's defended twice. h3 is the only move, so there's nothing uh, more you can do. e4 by, by black is a tactical uh, a tactical move and the best move, so knight e4, knight f6. Knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, castles, castles. Brings the, the position to something around equal. Uh, I, I'm not sure which side I would prefer. And uh, this is a messy position, so the engines give it as... Uh, plus 0.5, plus 0.6 for white, and the good news for white is that he gets the move c4 in. If it was black to play, then the move c5 would be a serious, uh, a serious move, and then after b5, black would have uh, stopped the defense of this pawn. So the position is roughly equal, nothing major for white, and that's why I would recommend the move e6. So after knight g4, e6, uh, the, the bishop can't take, of course, f takes is forced f6 and now you play knight to g5 uh, the bishop is still pinned so this is a threat and now after bishop takes b5 uh, something wonderful is going to happen uh, white doesn't recapture the piece white threatens the queen knight takes e6 and now uh, if black messes up this position then he could be in a lot of trouble uh, as you can see the main move is here giving up the queen if black tries to defend let's say queen here then this is just losing the queen is taking the knight the knight is taking the bishop we check and black is in a lot of trouble so there's no other move you have to give up your queen bishop takes here knight takes here and now you're just a victim to a nasty perpetual check and the knight and the two bishops form a great checking pattern and there's nothing you can do so the main line of the vice uh, of the dragon formation in the austrian attack is actually a forced draw but both sides have to play perfectly to achieve that and uh, as white, you can study this and learn it by heart and be able to surprise your opponents uh, fairly quickly. And I think most players with black are going to be very, very surprised after knight g4, e6 and uh, f6, knight g5. They're going to either spend a lot of time on their clock or just lose the position. You can already see that uh, the, the move knight to g5 has also uncovered an attack on the knight, so it's very tactical. Uh, these two uh, these two pieces form a great attacking pattern. <clears throat> okay, let's just recap on the opening moves. So e4, d6, the pirts, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, the forced moves, and the Austrian attack with f4. Preparing to play the move e5, going for a kingside attack, in some cases castling queenside, most often castling kingside. And black on the, on the other hand wants to play bishop to g7, and then castle and play the move c5. So remember the main two, po two pawn breaks. For black it's c5, for white is e5. If you play this position with white, remember that if you don't play e5, black might play e5, so you need to calculate that as well. 
Uh, okay, everybody, I hope you liked this video on the Austrian attack. Please do let me know what you think, and I'll continue with the Pierce defense uh, next time. Thanks very much, and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.